What's going on there, YouTube? And welcome back to another comic book video. This is the channel where we sit down and cover different comic book stories. Now, today, we are going to jump back over to IDW and continue our coverage over the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Now, in this video, we're going to learn a little bit more about the origin of Krang. Not the complete origin, but we do get some information about the character that led him to become a war leader in the Turtle comics, but also led him to become one of the main bad guys in the Turtles comics. So, if you do like today's comic book video, please hit that like button down below and also subscribe to the channel for more content to come in the near future. But I do hope you enjoy today's video. Before we are able to learn more about the origin of Krang, we actually start in the present day since it will lead us into learning about the origin of Krang. Starting with the fact you have one of the guards from Burlow Island telling Krang about the fact that one of the Ultrons have died. Ultrons being the race Krang belongs to. Remember that back in our last video, Kanai, the granddaughter to Shredder, came to Burlo Island to get more of the mutagen for the Foot Clan. Except when she did that, well, she broke a container that was using mutagen as a way to keep one of the Ultrons in stasis. Now, of course, Krang is upset, but when one of the guards try to help Krang out of his bath, to Krang, the guards must think he is a weak leader now, wondering if he has grown weak and he starts to think back to his past. We start at the point where we get to see the relationship between Krang's father and himself, us learning that these guys were not on good terms at this moment. To Krang's father, Krang is basically a lazy butt. Since Krang is the king son of Ultra Minions, Krang doesn't do much. He is a spoiled brat. At the same time, Krang father doesn't really try to bond with his son or try to let Krang in war meetings. Even when Krang tries to ask his father if he can join, well Krang's father says no. To him, his son is a spoiled brat and never will be anything great at all, which really sucks. Now we do learn what the war meeting is about. Crane's father, worst enemy, Trachis, Trachis, I'm gonna say it's Trachis, has taken over our planet the Ultra Minions have ruled for such a long time. The planet name is Morbus. It was a prison planet, and that is the planet Trachis has taken over. Crane's people have been having a hard time trying to take back control of that planet. Now, Crane thought he was just good enough to take a small army of Ultra Minions with him and he will get the planet back for his father. Except, of course, when he gets there, he falls into multiple traps to the point that the army he brought with him has been killed off completely. Crane's armor has been wrecked as well. So for Crane, he has messed up and proven that his father was right about him being a weak, spoiled brat. Trachis makes the usual mistake a lot of people do in comic books. Instead of making sure that Crane was actually dead, Crane begins the process of trying to survive on this rough planet. When I say rough, I'm talking about the fact that there are escaped convicts from the prison who have taken over the planet. I'm talking about the fact that this planet's environment is rough. The animals here are so dangerous as well. So for Crane, who is just this small little creature, could be killed easily. Except the motivation Crane had to prove his dad wrong, to actually make his dad happy, but to also get revenge for being embarrassed by Trachis, kept him moving forward to survive. So of course, once Crane was able to take down a few animals, think of a plan on how he was going to take down Trachis, he goes to confront Trachis, and you had Trachis act surprised when he saw Crane, 
to me, he shouldn't have because he never saw a dead body of Krang. But you have Krang using one of the animals that he had tamed to blind Trachis with some form of poison that came from the animal. With that happening, it made it perfect for Krang to take down Trachis with ease. He actually kills Trachis off, which sucks for this new character that was introduced to us in this book. Of course, this leads into the moment you have Crane find out that the prisoners began to respect him. With Crane killing off their leader, that makes him the one in charge of the planet now. To him, that is great because that led into him taking these two guys and going around taking over the planet. The ones who like him, of course, joined. The ones who did not, well, they, of course, were killed off. Once he has taken over the planet, his father comes to greet him and we see that this was the moment Crane's father had finally respected his son for the first time ever. For Crane, it was an amazing moment for him. To close on this book, we jump back to the present day, where Crane does kill off the guard who told him about the death of the Ultra Minion. Crane wants to remind everyone who works for him that he will kill everyone here if they ever fail him or disrespect him. Wasn't the complete origin of Crane, but we do learn a little bit more about his past and what led him into become a war leader. And this is where we are going to end today's video. So please hit that like button down below and also subscribe to the channel for more content to come in the near future. Also, any suggestions on books I should read? Well, please let me know in the comments below because you never know, your suggestion could be a future video down the road. But I do hope you enjoy today's video.